Hi there, my name is Lars Sørens and we're here over at Italesis interviewing some prese uh, presenters of papers, uh, PhD students, doctors, lecturers, we have them all for you, presenting uh, the very best of research at AI at this moment. I have the honor to talk to Shireen uh, Antun from the University of Illinois and Springfield. Um, and when we were uh, preparing this conversation, it came to my mind that you're actually giving eyes and ears to uh, forms of AI that we're going to encounter in our daily life. Is that a sort of a, an okay yeah, summary? It's, 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 a, it's, it's a nice <laughs> analogy. What we're trying to do, or at least what my research is trying to do, is to utilize a uh, continuous uh, frequency transmitted sonar. It's uh, unlike the sonar that many people would have in mind that just makes a, sends a pulse of noise and waits to hear the echo. This one is continuously transmitting. And, and sweeping the frequency down, say, from 100 hertz down to 50 hertz and capturing the echo on the fly and analyzing the echo, the re this particular piece of research that I'm presenting is analyzing the echo on the fly in real time to get, um, uh, to get uh, navigational primitive or navigational cues to allow a robot to move in, an, in, in really adverse conditions. Yeah, then we're thinking like collapsed buildings. Uh, or yeah, mine disasters, collapsed uh -huh. buildings. Uh, it, it, situation where the poverty of the environment renders visual perception uh, almost to be of no use, where there is a whole lot of dust, the absence of light, um, in, in a lot of these situations, visual perception pr proves to be more challenging than useful. Yeah. Uh, and in these conditions, um, after a disaster had happened, there usually is silence, which is really ideal where the sonar could function, function well to provide information. I sometimes get the idea that the word sonar, because it, it being such an old technique, uh, that works uh, against it almost, and people will be stuck in the mindset of, oh, sonar, yeah, that's that transmission, it sends out a beep and it waits to respond. And this new uh, ultrasonic system uh, that, you, that you've tested, uh, it would never, they would never connect it to such an old wo word. Do we need a new word for, for this? Actually, this, this particular <laughs> technique is quite old as well. Uh, the fact that a lot of people have this mindset that, ah, oh, we know everything about sonar, well, it serves me well because there's not many people competing with me <laughs> in, this, in this field. Uh, in reality, there is a lot to be learned and a lot to be found and discovered within, within this field. Uh, sonar is, is, is very, very reliable when it comes to the data it renders. More uh, reliable than visual sensors? In a lot of ways, lot it of is. Yeah. Uh, when you think about analyzing an image, the, the, a computer would go about analyzing an image by looking for edges. Um, in, in other words, changes of color in the image itself. And if you even if you look on the floor here, you see that shadow cast on the floor. Two hours from now, that shadow will be in a different place. These are ghosts in the image where the actual processor will have to find a way of dealing with it. Well, sonar is not affected by this. Another type of visual perception will be laser perception. Laser works really fine right up to the moment you get to a glass door. It'll tell the system there is nothing in front of you while your sonar will be going. <laughs> well, yeah. the sonar will be, be going mad, saying, "You know, you're nuts." But yeah, yeah. the visual system says there's nothing there. So, if we're uh, thinking in uh, in already the the area that this research could be applied, then we think this is an important part of it. But uh, could it, could it be uh, uh, the only system? Like, could we um, uh, make a robot give it this system? And will it be able to do the same thing? So will it always also need the visual sensors? Is it like us humans having ears and eyes? Well, it is like us humans. A fusion of sensors is really helpful. Um, a, a, a robot that relies on visual perception would certainly need the sonar with it to tell it, hey, this is a glass door, don't drive through it. Uh, a sonar by itself will involve a whole lot more processing in a, in a crowded environment than, uh, than a, a, visual, a, a, fu a system where a fusion of visual and sonar sensors are, are employed. But the, the good thing about, about this particular piece of research is the fact that the data we're being able to ex extract from the signal can be extracted using the technique I'm presenting in real time. In other words, you don't have to take the data away, think about it for a little while, come back. We want cues that are useful for the next footfall or for the next roll of the, of, of the wheel on the ground. Awesome. And this, this is when I started thinking about the human component 
com uh, component. No, I'm not a native speaker. Um, uh, how we can use as a hu as, as humans this technique? Could this like help the visually impaired? Yes, it certainly does help hu visually impaired uh, people. Um, there are examples of individuals in, in New Zealand and in Australia, where I'm originally from, that are using the system successfully to navigate their day-to-day -day life and, well, in the absence of vision. Um, it takes a bit of training, a bit of learning, because they have to interpret the audio cues that they're getting as to what these relate to. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, sonar, as sound travels in a in a, a sort of in a lead in a beam or in a in a semispherical or even a spherical way, it does s travel in a spherical wave because people behind me can hear me, uh, while a laser pointer will just point to where, where it's going to. So the 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 visually impaired person hearing audio cues from a sonar has to be able to identify whether they're coming from directly in front of them, in other words, in front of the source of the, uh, the ultrasonic signal, that will be the loudest, or coming from the side, it'll still be there, present, may not be as loud as the what's straight in front of them. It, it's a complex uh, um, uh, system. Obviously, I understand this is why uh, the, the only limit for it to be used by humans would be the human I itself. Is this also why it makes it so um, uh, easy to um, implement in like a, a robot situation in the, 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 the AI that we see uh, growing uh, um, among us and around us? It is. The only limit is the computational capability of the autonomous agent. Mm -hmm. The more computational capability there are, uh, the more sensors you can M mount on, on the device uh, and realistically expect real-time data to be extrapolated from the sensor uh, cues. Um, the human brain is capable of, of, of dealing with millions of cues per second. When you think for a moment about what you do to walk down the streets, well, if you walk down the street, you only need to see the ground in front of you and make sure it's still there. But your eyes perceive everything around you, and the brain acts as a filter, sort of removes all of this, says, yes, there is a hole in the ground in front of you, stop. And we want to do the same with, a, with an autonomous agent, so we need the computational power to be able to say, okay, we're going to filter out all these, but this is important. Well, this, there's a step here, we better not go over it. Then if we're, if we're thinking about these uh, autonomous agents um, uh, with this uh, applied uh, system uh, to them, going to be operating around us, then uh, the, the rate of how, the, how successful this system is becomes more and more important uh, when we're developing a trust relation with all the tech in our surrounding. We so what is the, the, the rate of, how, how successful is it? How successful is it as a function of, again, computation and speed? Um, this particular research that I'm presenting here, the success rate was around the 80% mark, which made me stop and think, is it really the success rate or am I misinterpreting the data? And, but because I can empirically point at every point, of, every point in the signal and the matching uh, obstacle in real life, okay, so this, this is reliable. Uh, we, have to we have to remember that a robot is anywhere between 100 to 300 pounds worth of metal, and if they're operating in uncontrolled space, in other words, in a human space, a lot of the safeguards are the responsibility of the robot and the robot programmer. They're not the responsibility of the human in front of you that you're about to run over, or the human that is coming at you because he didn't notice you. you the still, your device is 300 pounds of steel, and the human is going to be injured, and there is a liability you have to think about. So it's, it's not unthinkable that if we want to uh, uh, accept all these uh, autonomous agents in our society, uh, we humans should be equipped with some uh, form of, of something to help us uh, navigate all those other systems. <laughs> well, we, can, we come equipped with all this. We come equipped with vision and with auditory cue, uh, with, with, with ability to hear and all that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it'd be good if we'd be aware of what's around us. Yeah. Uh, but again, the, this, the, the responsibility for the safeguard when you put a machine in a human space is on the machine designer and operator. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can't tell the person that got hit by a car in the street it was your fault, you're in the middle of the road, and therefore, bad luck, you're dead. It's still the responsibility of the driver driving two tons of steel. <laughs> we still have a lot to, uh, to come forth to, to work out uh, together. I'm sure that your research is going to help us uh, um, to, to make machines even smarter and maybe even uh, save your life when you're, uh, hopefully not, but 
in a collapsed building situation, <laughs> the robot equipped with this uh, sonar can, uh, can find you. Uh, Shireen Antoon from the University of uh, Illinois and Springfield, uh, thank you so much thank for you. sharing your thoughts and your uh, research uh, with us. Um, if we inspired you with this film, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your peers and use the button subscribe to our channel for much more content that we've created for you uh, in, uh, on our intelligence, uh, Intellisys uh, conference. And um, maybe even you will visit us and we have the chance to meet uh, you and talk to you uh, person to person. We're always uh, looking forward to meeting bright minds and to gather around here and to talk AI. Thank you for watching. See you next time.